What is up guys, we're here at Bromley Driving Test Centre for another driving test route. I'm going to walk you through and talk you through a driving test route from what I would do so that you know what you should do when you come here for your driving test. So, we're going to start here outside the driving test centre, not the front entrance, the back entrance in one of the DVSA marked bays. So, when you come here for your driving test, if you're not coming with a driving instructor who already knows the area, Brindley Way. Brindley Way, Brindley Way come around the back of Brindley Way, keep going past the little, you'll see it in a minute, and then park up, reversing into one of the bays so that when the examiner comes and gets in the car with you, they just say, hey, drive on. You don't have to reverse out of the bay and then drive on. So let's do that. The examiner's got in the car with me. Hey, Francis, this is the start of your driving test. Actually, I haven't even loaded up a driving test route. So I'm gonna load up a driving test route on my sat-nav and then I'm gonna drive around it and then I'm gonna talk you through it. And we're gonna pass our driving test. Although, like always, with these driving test routes, and if you haven't seen them before, check out the other Bromley one. Go, click it, click it, click it, click it, it's really good. Or watch this first and then click that one later. Anyway, um, we're gonna drive around it. I'm gonna to talk to you about it, but because I'm concentrating on you guys, <laughs> mainly, I might make a mistake or two. If I make a mistake, comment below. Let me know what mistake I've made. I will definitely give you a heart and we can debate the mistake, whether it was a mistake or not, in the comments. So, I've got the route loaded up on my nav of sat and let's start. So, Francis, drive on when you're ready. At the beginning of your driving test, the examiner might just say, what I want you to do is drive off from here and reverse part back into this position, which means you're doing your manoeuvre first. You're reversing into one of the DVSA car park bays which is great, get it out of the way at the beginning. So we're taking it nice and easy at the beginning of your driving test, not racing around here. Blind corner, what do we do for a blind corner? Slow down. Lidl, on your right, can be quite busy. After 100 yards, you have reached your destination. Great, it can be quite busy, that Lidl car park, especially at busy times. So be careful, take it easy, driving around that car park. So end of the road, the turn left. The road, turn left, then at the end of the road, turn left. Easy. This route is going to take left, us... Then at the end of the road, turn left. This route is going to take us towards Hither Green and Lewisham. So if you've done a bit of practice or you've seen the Hither Green driving test route, if not it's there, then you might recognise some of the roads. Bromley can span quite a big area. What is that guy doing? Turn left. Interesting. Bromley can span quite a big area. We can go all the way down to Grove Park, uh, towards Mottingham, we can go towards Hither Green, we can go towards Bromley, we can go, we can go so many different places. If you're practicing here with your mum, your dad, your friends, your family, start here and drive away for 15 minutes. That's a really good gauge of how far the tests go. Okay, Bromley Driving Test Centre on the left. If you come here on your own, don't park outside because you get a ticket go around the back and park around the back, but they don't like you parking here if you don't have a driving test. So if the driving test center's open, don't park outside the test center. Nice and easy on this road. We're coming out onto a 30 mile an hour road. Is it necessary for me to go 30 miles an hour? Of course not. I'm gonna go at a speed where I'm comfortable. Don't drive too slowly though, and impede the flow of traffic because you'll get marked down for that. But we don't have to race around. There's a little reminder, nice one, 30 miles an hour, works for speed. We're not gonna impede the flow of traffic by driving at 15 miles an hour, but we're not gonna necessarily drive everywhere at 30. It's important to recognize the difference between a maximum speed limit and the safe speed for the road. This road's pretty clear though, pretty safe. So we can drive at a good speed here. It's a really nice Bromley test center. I said it so much in the other Bromley video. I said it so much, but this is actually one of my favorite driving test centers. Okay, this is one of the tricky things though with Bromley test center. We are coming into Lewisham. We're now in Lewisham. It's just checking the speed there, which means I'm just going a little bit too fast there. Lewisham has a 20s plenty policy. Most roads in Lewisham are 20 miles an hour. Most roads in Bromley are 30 miles an hour. So as you cross that boundary, as you go across the Lewisham and Bromley boundary, you're gonna find that the speed limits massively change. So we've just gone from an 
easily 30 mile an hour road to we're on the same road but it's now 20. That's because we've crossed into the Lewisham boundary. In Lewisham, if it's a minor road, a small road, or it's got yellow lines on the road, for the most part, it's gonna be 20 miles an hour. That even goes for nice big wide roads like this. So it's really important to practice this, recognize the differences between Lewisham and Bromley. For example, the bins, the wheelie bins are different. Another example, the street signs are different. In Lewisham, the street signs aren't green. In the borough of Bromley, you have green street signs for the most part. Now this isn't a 100% effective solution but if you start to recognize the clues you'll be able to make the distinction 300 yards turn right you'll be able to make the distinction and easily guess what the speed limit is if you've missed it okay we're in a little bit of traffic here i think this probably looks like temporary traffic lights so forwards Okay, it wasn't temporary traffic lights, it was just traffic lights. And what we can see happening ahead is some of the cars have gone around that Mercedes because they can see that the road splits into two up ahead. They've gone on the wrong side of the road to get two or three cars further forwards. You might see your parents do that. You might see your friends and family do that. There's no need to do that on your driving test. There's absolutely, the lights are gonna go green and we're gonna get there eventually. This is Grove Park. Grove Park traffic lights usually make a bit of traffic. It's fine, there used to be roadworks here. When there were roadworks, the traffic was backed up for hours. But now there's no roadworks, it's not that bad. If you get stuck here on your driving test, there's no need to start stressing. We're stopped, we're stationary, make a conversation with the examiner. I don't know, they usually ask you icebreaker questions. They've got this icebreaker question bank, which they pull out when you stop at a traffic light to just chill the situation out and make it less tense. They might ask you a question like, if you weren't here on your driving test today, what would you be doing with yourself? And you'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> no, just, just talk to them. They're humans, right? They're just normal people. Um, you could even have a question or two ready for them in case you feel nervous. As soon as you make conversation with another human, breaks the ice, takes the pressure off, takes the stress off, and you feel so much more relaxed. Say, oh, wow, nice weather or anything. Even if it's super mundane, you will feel so much better for having asked them a question and getting a reply back. Okay, why am I in the right lane? Why am I in the right lane? Have I made a mistake? No, I did that on purpose because I can see on the sat-nav, I'm turning right soon. This is the beauty of having a sat-nav on your driving test because you can make plans early. If I can see up ahead, there's two lanes. One of them's turning right. I'm going to be in the right lane early so I don't have to do it later. Just wait for this traffic light to go green. Okay, I'm never falling asleep on my driving test. Never, ever, ever go to sleep. Never, ever, ever chill out mirror mirror and go because as soon as the light turns green you're going to forget something you're trying to drive instinctively on your driving test it won't work okay After 100 going to signal yards, here turn right there we go turn right always stay aware and alert however long you're waiting for a red traffic light stay aware and stay alert and stay awake because something's happening next and if you're ready for it you're going to perform well if you're not ready for it you're going to mess it up especially on your driving test where you're super nervous and super on edge. All right, so I'm turning right. I'm checking my mirrors a couple of times. I checked them before I signaled, but I'm checking them again because something might have changed. There might have been a motorbike sneakily sneaking up my inside. So I'm double, triple checking a few times. Um, we're going all the way down towards Mottingham on this test route. Checking my mirrors as I'm moving around. I'm making sure that I'm sticking to that 20 mile an hour speed limit. If the cars in front are getting away from me, that's fine. It means they're driving too fast. It doesn't mean I need to keep up with the flow of traffic. They're driving too fast. This road's nice, it's comfortable. I'm taking that speed bump in the middle. You don't have to, but I am to smooth out the ride for my examiner who's in the driving seat. No, passenger seat, the examiner doesn't drive for you. I'm trying to give them a smooth drive because they'll really appreciate that. Although it's not my main concern. My main concern is safety. Safety on my driving test is what's gonna make me pass. The one question that I have to answer for the examiner is, are you, me, safe at driving? If the answer is yes, I get a driving license. If the answer is, mm, I don't get a driving license. If the answer is no, 
then my driving test gets terminated. <laughs> and <laughs> that's not a good thing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stick to the left lane here because unless I'm turning right or overtaking, I'm driving on the left. Stopping nice and early before that nice shiny Mercedes in front of me. I'm third in the queue here and I've got a nice view of the traffic light. If my light turns green, I've got ages before I need to clutch down and first gear. If I was first or second or maybe even third in the queue, I'd stay in first gear so that I'm ready to go. The trick with your driving test is just plan ahead. People say, oh, the driving test is really horrible. It made me so nervous. I dated it. Back in Bromley, what's the speed limit? For the same road, it's now 30, so let's go. There's no need to be nervous on your driving test. Why? Because you should be concentrating on your driving test, not concentrating on nerves. What's next? Park cars on the left. What are we gonna do about it? Check the mirror, make sure there's nothing overtaking you. Move out slightly. Don't need to move out too much because it's a nice, big, wide road. On this road here, what's the examiner gonna ask you to do? They might ask you to pull up on the left which is great, no problem with that at all. There's loads of nice spaces. Mirror, signal, position, speed. Do not mount the curb unless expressly asked to on your driving test. Do not drive on pavements. Pavements are for pedestrians. Cars should not drive on them. Okay, handbrake neutral and chill. I've parked on this road. You might be thinking, why have you parked on this road? This is not an appropriate road to park on. Yes, it is. It doesn't have any red lines, doesn't have any yellow lines, which mean no parking, and it didn't, and I didn't park over a dropped curb. So it's a perfectly good place to park. Those are the criteria. No red lines, no yellow lines, and no dropped curbs. If you're not sure, ask, can I park there? There's no tricks on the driving test at all. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the third exit. No tricks at all. They're not trying to trick you, they're just trying to test, test if you're safe. So if you don't understand something, ask now roundabout let's plan this out in advance it's not a very hard one we're coming up to mottingham um cross the roundabout and take the third exit no problemo checking right right nothing coming nice and easy that's not a mini roundabout so i'm going to signal to exit it and i'm going to turn right on the next cross one the roundabout and take the second exit then Take the second left. The sat nav's just told me to cross the roundabout, but I can see from the picture, it's a right turn. I can also see from the shape of the roundabout, and just by looking ahead there, it's a right turn. Make sure that you're alert and not taking the tom-tom as... After 100 yards, turn left. Definitive directions. We need to be making our own mind up about directions. The tom-tom is just there to guide turn you. Turn left. It quite often says weird stuff that doesn't make sense and we need to still drive properly. All right, 30 miles an hour on this road. Remember we're in Bromley, borough of Bromley. So this road would be 20 in Lewisham, but it's 30 in Bromley, which is why that's the really After only tricky bit. Yards, turn left. Cool, it's the only tricky bit of driving at Bromley Driving Test Centre, the difference between Bromley and Lewisham's speed limits. Get used to it. You'll recognise the difference quite quickly. Okay, he'll start here, checking my mirrors. Not rolling back. Hey. This car's actually got a hill hold, so that wasn't too hard. Um, what's happening next? It's really good to have some local knowledge because if you have some local knowledge, you know what's happening next. If you know what's happening next, you're gonna feel good about what's happening next. You're gonna feel relaxed and prepared. After 100 yards, turn left. Which is why the more practice that you can do around your test center, the better. The more mock tests that you can do, the better. I know what's happening next. It's the A20. It's a dual carriageway. It's 40 miles an hour. And that doesn't need to be stressful if I've already done it. If I practiced it and aced it with my examiner, examiner, if I practiced it and aced it with my instructor, that's gonna be easy. So I don't want that to be the first time I've done it. Come here and practice. There's so many people that book a driving test in a place where they're not from and then just turn up and try and pass it. Every area is quite different. If I'm from Barking and I try and take my test here, Hither Green, I'm probably not going to pass unless I practice in Hither Green if I'm used to the roads in Barking. Okay, I've got a little bit of traffic coming up to these traffic lights on the A20, so forward. Okay, let's try and make these traffic lights. Turn Turning left. left, mirror, signal. 
there's my sign 40 miles an hour and the next instruction on the sat nav is in one and a quarter miles turn right okay fine one and a quarter miles is quite a long way away so i'm going to chill on that for a bit when i'm on a dual carriageway what i need to focus on is sitting up nice and straight so i can focus on the road ahead I need to be in the middle of the road ahead and not weaving left and right. If you have trouble with that, which a lot of people who learn to drive do, practice it a lot. Drive up and down this road loads until you can stick center in the middle of the road. And the biggest tip that I have for people who have trouble with this, look further ahead. You're looking down at what's in front of you. It's not gonna work. We need to look and pick a point of reference really far ahead of you. And that helps you a lot more to stay center in the road. The other thing that you need to look out for is your speed limit. Now you don't want to keep looking down at the speedometer because that's going to get confusing and it's going to take your attention away from what you need to be concentrating on, which is the road. So listen to the engine noise. If you hear the engine noise dip, you're now going slower. If you hear the engine noise rise, you're going faster. So get to 40 and then tune in to the engine noise. After 400 yards, left on the roundabout and take the first exit. All right, Clifton's roundabout, left first exit, no problem with that at all. No problem at all. That's gonna be nice and easy. I'm gonna start slowing down now for the red light, checking what's behind me. Clifton's roundabout is probably the hardest roundabout around Go here. left on the roundabout and take the first exit. But it's not hard to turn left off it. if you're pr okay mirror signal and i'm not in a hurry here so if i miss a couple of gaps no drama oh that was a really nice gap still 40 miles an hour so let's be confident let's be punchy let's use a bit of gas and get up to 40 miles an hour three quarters of a mile before i'm going to turn left so zoning out from the sat nav again and focusing on what's happening next Staying in the left lane, this is quite important. The left lane's for driving and the right lane's for overtaking and turning right. If the left lane has someone that's not making progress in it, as in they're driving too slowly, I will need to overtake and get past them as long as I'm not turning left soon. Otherwise, I'm just gonna stick to the left. Relax and chill in the left lane. Okay, I'm quite far back in the traffic. I'm gonna relax my clutch foot, go into neutral and take a breather. There's my green light, clutch down, first gear, and continue. And notice how I'm driving. I'm really relaxed. I've done enough driving before my driving test to know what I'm doing. The examiner's not trying to trick me, they're just trying to assess, is this guy safe at driving? You know you're safe at driving already before you went for your driving test. After 600 yards, turn left. You booked it. And you booked it because you knew that you were safe at driving. You knew that you could pass your driving test. All you've got to do is show this guy that you can drive round in a loop for half an hour, and that's it, you get a driving test. You get a driving license. It's not difficult. My hands. After 400 yards, turn left. I lightly gripped on the steering wheel. I'm not really tense like this. I'm just relaxing. The more relaxed you're gonna be, the more you'll be able to show the examiner what a good driver you are. And that's the key. Practice mock tests. The more you practice mock tests, the more you'll be expecting it. Walking into the unknown is scary. So don't drive too quickly. Don't try and emulate your dad's driving for your After driving test. Yards, turn left. All right, actually, I don't know turn why I went left. to third gear there. I'm gonna keep it in second, because I'm coming up to that bend. Nice and slow, no rush. Perfect. 20 miles an hour. The place that you're gonna see speed limit signs is at the beginning and end of roads. Makes sense, right? At the beginning of the road to tell you what the speed of the road is that you're going into, and at the end of the road to tell you that you're coming onto a road with a different speed limit. Great. So that's the time to look out for it. If you miss a 20 sign, there's usually a lot more 20 signs all the way down the road. We call these repeater signs. They're the little speed limit signs. 
that you have all the way down the road. I'm going to slow down for this zebra crossing because it's pedestrians. Okay, they didn't use it. There's one right there. There's a 20 sign. It's small. It's repeating the speed limit. It's not a new speed limit. It's really important to go 20 miles an hour if this is your driving test. Don't speed around too fast. There's a car behind me. I can see them in my mirror. It's a massive BMW. I'm not going to speed up. After 200 yards, turn left, then at the end of the road, turn right. Remember, you've got as much right to be on the road as everybody else. Driving in Lewisham is intimidating because the speed limits are painfully turn slow. Left, then at the end of the road, turn right. And pretty much nobody obeys them, especially on a road like this, which in Bromley will be 30. But you need to for your driving test. So if you're practicing with your mum or dad, don't drive round. At the end of the road, turn right. At 30, thinking you'll drive at 20 on your driving test because then you won't be used to it. Always drive at the speed limit. And once you've passed your driving test, don't drive at 30, still drive at 20. Because it's the speed limit. Right? Yeah. Okay, mirror, signal, position, speed, break it down to the basics. This is the stuff that you've done on your first or second lesson. No need to mess it up by not doing it. Okay, that guy's letting me go. Thank you. There's no excuse for getting corners wrong, getting junctions wrong, or getting priority wrong, or anything else like that. Uh, it's the road, it's close to the end. On your first or second lesson, you were doing mirror signal position speed look every single time because you needed to. On your driving test, do mirror signal position speed look. It might sound basic, but break it back down to the basics so that you pass. We're not trying to be a hero here. We're just trying to get a driving license. What's happening ahead? There's a car coming towards me. There is space for two, but I'm having to travel closer to the cars on the left, so I'm reducing my speed massively. The level of hazard and risk has gone up, so my speed goes down. It's important now. After 200 yards, turn right, then turn right. All right. This bit's quite busy. I'm concentrating loads. You can tell I'm concentrating. If you're on a driving test, you should be so focused. What are these pedestrians doing? Has she seen me? Turn okay. right, then turn right. That's interesting, that one there. You might have thought, oh, well, Francis, why don't you let her go? Because it's not a crossing. Turn right. Turn right again. That was not a crossing. It was a an island it's really nice to be helpful in real life but on your driving test you just need to prove to the examiner that you know what you're doing so when you come up to an island and there's a pedestrian Turn there left, then you have reached your destination. be ready to stop for them but don't allow them to cross and definitely don't wave anyone across that will result in an immediate fail okay the sat the sat nav said that's the end of my destination or something you have reached your destination that's the one which doesn't mean that we're back in the test centre, it means that independent driving's over. So I'm going to keep driving and the examiner's going to now direct me. What that also means is probably I'm quite close to my driving test centre. But like you hear me say in other videos, I'm going to keep focused. So this right here, this is an island. If there was a pedestrian waiting there, I would not let them go. I would be ready to stop if they walked out in front of me, but I would not purposefully stop for them because that's misleading to the cars behind. If it's a zebra crossing, that's a different matter. If it's a pedestrian traffic light, traffic light control pedestrian crossing, that's another different matter. But if it's an island, we treat it as an island. It's not a crossing. We keep driving, be ready to stop. Okay, I got stopped to a couple of traffic lights there and it took a little while to get through it. Some people are like, oh no, I don't want to get stuck in traffic on your driving test. You don't really. Some people are like, yeah, I want to get stuck in traffic on my driving test because it'll be shorter. No, you're following a set route. It goes round in a loop and the examiner's not making it up. Oh, Ferrari. The examiner's not making it up as they go along. It's a set route, which means if you get stuck in traffic, your driving test takes longer. You don't really want that. You might want to think about the time of day that you take your driving test, 30 miles an hour back in Bromley. You might not want to take your driving test, let's speed up, at school time, as in nine o'clock in the morning. You might not want to take your driving test at three o'clock in the afternoon because the roads are going to be busier. Just a suggestion. If you've got a driving test booking and it's at nine o'clock, you're going to take that driving test at nine o'clock. It's that simple. You just need to be a little bit more aware and a little bit more alert. 
and take a little bit more care while you're driving. Here we go. Little on my right. I can see the front of the driving test center on my right. I'm going to be really careful here. I think it's something like 75% of accidents happen within one mile of your home because you start switching off. You start relaxing and you start thinking about what you're going to do when you get home. Right now, you might be starting to think about what you're going to do with your new driving license. It's not over yet. Oh, there's a gear in there somewhere. Grind it till you find it. <laughs> Take the next road on the right, please, Francis. No problem. Brindley Way. Like I said, it's really important to be careful on this road because people come and go out of Lidl car park fast. So I'm going to be very careful that I don't get in their way. I'm going to drive all the way around this blind corner really slowly because anything could be coming the other way. Massive lorries delivering to Lidl. And I'm going to park up again in one of the DVSA car parking bays because that's what the examiner is going to tell me to do. I'm going to park forwards because I've done my manoeuvre already and this is not marked. There we go. So if I don't get in the lines, don't worry about it. Don't try and correct it. Get the car stopped. The examiner will say thanks. Turn the car off. I'm going to give you your results. Did I pass? Did I not pass? Comment below. Hope you guys found that useful. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.